Hello everyone, it's Benny, and welcome back to the audio programming tutorial series. Last time we set up the audio context, and that means we're very, very close to having our whole audio architecture working. We just need the device and the audio data. And that's what we're going to be doing in this video. So let's go ahead and get into it. As usual, I went ahead and set up the basic skeletons for those off screen since that part's really just monkey work. So again, copied this. It's basically what have I had in iAudio data, except, well, this is an implementation file called SDL WAV Audio Data. <laughs> I did for this one, I went ahead and added parameters to the constructor, but that's all I did really. I added parameters for a file name and if we're gonna stream from file or not. And, yeah, all these just blank methods. Same thing for audio device. Copy the interface and blank methods. So there you go. Hopefully you can get all that typed in yourself. And with that, let's go ahead. Let's get started. I'm going to start by implementing SDL WAV audio data. Because we've actually written about 90% of this code already. It's the stuff we have in main. So our members are going to be the same thing we used to have in our audio data struct. So I'm going to just go to the header file and I'm going to add those in and I'm going to rename them with our m underscore naming convention. And there we go. We have all member variables coded in. And for our methods, well, First up is our constructor, and this is going to be pretty much what we have in main here with our SDL audio spec and all this stuff, so yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and copy all this up to the, just before the audio device, and go to the CPP file, and paste. Now this is a little bit unnecessary at the moment. What we can do is right here, we can say mpos equals lav start and mlength equals lav length. And we don't need to actually have this part here. But there. And right here, our error is a little bit... Well, yeah, this isn't going to work. I'm still going to do a temporary error handling. I don't want to get into implementing a full error system just yet. So I'm just going to throw the file path and uh, well file name actually. Here we go. Yeah and I'm going to leave it at that. Now this is going to give us an error right now. And why? I'm not exactly sure. I think I might have missed an include from here. No? Okay then I'm not sure why this is giving us an error. One moment. And, of course, it was nothing. It was just the error highlighting in my system here. Hadn't quite caught up to the code yet, so yeah, the code was fine. So anyways, back to our copying pasting spree. We're going to use SDL free WAV, just like we did in main, for our destructor. Because that's really all we need to do. So, I'm going to free WAV at Ah, now here we're actually going to have to be, do something a little different. We're going to need to know about the start. So I'm going to say mstart equals wav start, and we're going to free the start because we want to free the start from the start of our big buffer, not just from not from wherever we happen to be. So let's go ahead and change that in our header. It's not going to be hard. We're going to have another well, you went eight pointer for the start. And there, we have our constructor destructor set up. And for length, this is going to be easy enough. We're going to return in length. And that just leaves the sample generation function. We're done with this. And guess what? We can copy it from my audio callback. Almost. There's actually a small chain. Well, I don't know about small, but there's a, a reasonable change we're going to have to make here. First off, well, I guess we can leave this here. 
if length is zero, then yeah, we can go ahead and return uh, zero. <laughs> Otherwise, we're going to go through this almost like we have right now. We're just going to start by replacing audio arrow length with just M length. And there we go. But for audio pause, it's not going to be quite that simple. Because we're now copying into a float array. And while that's... We can't just mim copy what we have here, which is a bunch of shorts into that. So we're going to have to be a little bit more innovative with this. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a little bit of a trick. I'm going to create an sint 16 pointer called samples. And this is going to be equal to sint 16 pointer. So I'm casting in position to an sint 16 pointer. And this is a little bit of a trick. This is not going to work in all cases, so make this more general. Because what if I load the WAV file and this WAV file isn't formatted with signed 16-bit samples. Well, of course, it's going to fail. Well, I mean, it's going to do something, but it's not going to be correct. <laughs> so anyways, and at the end of this, I'm going to say impos equals back to uint 8 pointer samples. So just a little bit of casting going on there. Again, this is going to work for now, but we're going to do something else later. And also our mem copy. We're going to want to replace this with a for loop. So I'm going to say you went 32 i equals 0, i is less than length, i plus plus. And each time through the loop, we're going to do something with one particular sample. So samples, we're just going to say plus plus at the end. You could do it actually up here with the i plus plus, but I'm just going to put it down at the bottom. And now, streams of i. So this is the big thing here. We want to take our current sample, so I'm just going to dereference whatever samples is currently pointing to, and to convert this to a floating point value between negative 1 and 1, I'm just going to divide by 32,768.0f, which, well, it's the conversion factor. Well, 32,768 is the biggest number that a signed 16-bit value could be. Technically, it's the smallest, since only negative can go to 32,768. 32, is the largest positive value, but eh, you know. <laughs> this is the biggest value any six signed 16-bit value could ever have. So divide by that, it's in the range of, well, negative 1 to 1. Simple as that. And there you go. So this is going to be our new function. Almost. We do have two parameters here we're blatantly ignoring. Our position and our sample info. Position, I'm going to keep blatantly ignoring for the time being. So I'm just going to add another to-do here. To-do handle pause. But our sample info we can actually handle. So I'm going to have some float. I'm going to call just factor, for lack of a better thing to call it. And I'm going to change our division here to 1.0f divided by this. And I'm going to change our main loop to samples times factor. Now this is just another way of doing the exact same thing. But the reason I'm doing it this way because of our sample info. What I want to do here is I want to say info.volume multiplied by this. So we're sort of double dutying this year now, <laughs> if you want to put it that way. We're both using this to convert this the sample from short to floating point values in proper range, and we're also using it to adjust the sample, well, the sample's volume. And there we go, that should be everything we need to do. So with that, oh, we need a semicolon at the end, but we should be able to build and we're going to get a few warnings, because our other ones aren't done just yet. And we have an error. Oh. Deconst character pointer. 
Ah, that's why it was having an error. So that is an error. What's well, easy enough? File name dot cster. And now if we build, there we go. It built. So cool. All we have left is the device. But there's one more to do. I want to do very fast. We're ignoring stream from file, so I'm just going to add yet another to do here. To do handle stream from file. But now onto the device. The device here is actually going to be very simple, except I'm not entirely sure why this just has the file path and not the stream from file parameter. I guess I didn't add that earlier, but oh well, it's not a big deal. We're not using that now anyways. So we're going to return a new SDL WAV audio data. We're going to, of course, need to include it, so include SDL WAV audio data dot HPP. I'm going to pass in the file path, and we're going to pass in false. Because even if we said true, it's not going to do anything. We're not doing anything with that just yet. Allocating an object of abstract class SDL WAV audio data. Ah, I forgot to delete these when I copied them. So if I get rid of that, that should be not an issue anymore. There we go. So we do that. And if audio data, so if we're actually passing in something we can delete, we're going to delete audio data. That's all audio device needs to do. It's just here sort of as, well, a factory class in a way. It's going to make sure we send proper files to classes that can actually use them. Granted, we only have one right now, so it's incredibly simple. Oh, and I forgot I'm using this convention in here, so let's go ahead and yeah, make sure we're using consistent conventions. I forgot this, this is the convention I'm using for this project. And there, I think that's okay. So with that, we should be able to set up some basic test code here. And there were a few minor things that I forgot about. In SDL, actually let's start with the device. In SDL audio device, I forgot to get rid of the equal zero here, and I forgot to make it extend audio device. So very minor things, not horrible deal. I think I forgot something similar in SDL WAV audio data, but there you go, fixed that as well. Now the really big thing, in SDL WAV audio data, this should be returning size t negative 1, because that's our error code, not 0. So, yeah. And the another really important thing, when we cast to 16-bit samples, that means when we go through here, we're consuming, well, 16 bits or 2 bytes at a time. But our length is in bytes. So we have to subtract length times 2. <laughs> because, well, this length is how many samples we consumed. Each sample is 2 bytes. So if we want to know the number of bytes, we need to take that times 2. And there we go. So with that, we, sh we should be able to use our interface a bit. And I actually can get rid of this here because I've set up a very basic example of our new audio interface in action. We're creating a new audio device in context, just there's the STL device in context, unsurprisingly. We were creating audio file with the device. We have basic sample info, we're creating a sound with our info and our audio data. And here, I have a basic input loop that we can use to control our audio context. So, let's go ahead and, oh, and of course at the end we release the audio data and delete everything. And we still need to SDL init and SDL quit manually because we're not doing that anywhere in our device and context. But yeah, so let's go ahead and test this out. So, let's go ahead and let's build. And everything builds just fine. So let's run, let's test this out. Now at first, nothing's going to happen. If I press the A key and hit enter, it should start playing our old audio clip. And if I press the S key and hit enter, it should pause the audio clip, which it has. And that means if I hit A again, it should resume from where it stopped playing. And 
if I press D, it should stop the audio clip and take it back to the beginning. But since our WAV audio data isn't fully implemented yet, that's not going to happen. It's just going to pause. So, As you hear, if we let the audio clip run to the end, it stops smoothly. It doesn't go all wacky and crash the computer. So there we go. Everything seems to be in working order, sort of. There's still a lot of to-dos, even if we do have a basic usable audio library here. But how can we get our audio to stop properly? Can we implement some more interesting audio options, like perhaps, say, adjusting the pitch of the audio? Find out next time on the Audio Programming Tutorial series. Hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, and I'll see you next time.